Hello everybody, I am back with yet another video and today, as you can see by the title, I'm going to be going over my E3 predictions uh, for this year, 2012. Now, this is always a very exciting um, event for us gamers and is only two weeks away, so very excited about that. I know there's going to be a tremendous number of announcements, but this video I'm actually primarily going to be focusing on Nintendo because... They're kind of um, the big company this year, you know, the big reveal of their, you know, Wii U. We, of course, know it, we've seen it, but we're really kind of skeptical, at least I am, as far as what the system actually is. Um, you know, they really kind of focused on showing the controller, not so much the actual console itself. I don't even think we have seen the console itself, to my own knowledge, but I'm going to go ahead and focus on Nintendo. I will um, give a brief, uh, you know, prediction as far as Sony and Microsoft at the end of the video. Uh, probably a pretty bold prediction, but, you know, um, I have confidence that I may be correct. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please, by all means, leave comments and video responses because this is, of course, um, something that, you know, a lot of people have their own thoughts and opinions and predictions, and uh, it would be nice to see what other people think. Um, is going to be revealed at E3 this year as well. So, by all means, guys, don't hesitate to put up a video response. All right, so the first thing you have to take into consideration when discussing any console and its release is the price. And as of right now, we don't really know what the price of the Wii U is going to be. You know, there's plenty of rumors. There's plenty of people that are throwing out ranges and numbers of, you know, Nintendo can't go above this, they can't go below that. Um, and personally, I think that it's going to be between 300 and 350 because you look at the controller itself, is it essentially it's essentially like a mini iPad. And for an iPad to sell for three hundred to five hundred dollars right now, you know, I would expect that, you know, for the cost of production for the Wii U, um, you know, we've only really seen the controller. We haven't even seen the console itself. So, you know, you to incorporate that into the cost as well, I think it's probably gonna range from about three to three fifty. Uh, you know, that may be generous, that may be you know, uh, cutting it short, I don't know. Um, but, you know, we're probably going to find out soon after E3 as far as the price goes. And, of course, I personally think, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that they're going to include some type of software in the game, as they did with the Wii, because that was tremendously successful, you know, packaging in Wii Sports and later on Wii Sports Resort. You know, it was just this basically demo software that offered a various number of games to really show off to people what the system could actually do. And I thought that was um, an absolutely brilliant marketing technique because, you know, just bundling that software in, it, you know, didn't just show tennis. There was tennis, boxing, golf, um, bowling, you know, all of these different things that, you know, attracted people who were, I, know, I hate to use these terms, but hardcore gamers um, and casual gamers alike because, you know, an old couple you know, grandma and grandpa could sit there and play bowling, as well as, you know, little Joey and Susie who, um, you know, love to play video games, and, you know, it, it, should, it was just covered a wide demographic of people, and I think it was a really great marketing technique. I think they're going to do the same thing with the Wii U. I think they're probably going to do something a little bit different. I think they should do something different than just some bundle of sports games, whether that be the new Super Mario Brothers Wii or me or whatever the heck it's called. Um, I think they're going to do that um, on some level, you know, I'm sure we'll find out either in E3 or soon after E3 what that software is going to be, and um, hopefully it's something that's, you know, really enticing, really gives you a nice incentive to want to go out and, uh, you know, spend that 300 to $350 if that is the asking price for the console. Now, one of the biggest things you have to take into consideration when buying any console is not only the price, because... Whether the price is right or not, I don't really care. If it doesn't have games at launch that I want to play, there's no reason for me to go out and buy it. I might as well just wait for something else to come um, later on. So I think one of the main reveals, it is inevitable at this point. Miyamoto's talked about it. Um, we've heard rumors. I, th I think it's even been confirmed. Pikmin. I've never played Pikmin 1 or 2 for the Wii or the GameCube. Um, so I really have absolutely zero interest in this game. I know I probably should play the game because obviously there's, you know, a very, um, large fan base behind the game, but I've never played it. 
But I think that is going to be one of the headliners for the launch um, lineup of games that are going to be coming out for the Wii U. Um, whether it's going to be called Pikmin 3 or Pikmin Wii U or Pikmin something, uh, I don't know. I don't think anyone really knows at this point except for the people that are developing the game and probably Nintendo. But I think Pikmin is definitely going to be the headline title that's going to really try and sell the console. Um, whether that's a nice marketing technique, I don't know, or marketing strategy, I should say, um, because I don't know if there are, you know, I, I know there's a, a large fan base behind the game, but I don't know if there's enough people behind the game like Mario, because Mario, everyone knows, while Pikmin is just something that, you know, really the fan base behind the game is going to buy. You know, Mario, um, people that don't really play games, that name is attractive, because it's very popular and everyone knows it. You know, if a game like Mario was launched with the console, it's obviously going to bring more people to the console. So I'm kind of, you know, worried if that is going to be the system seller game. I don't know at this point, but I think that it probably is going to be one of the main games that they're going to try and sell uh, the Wii U with at launch. And now the launch window, you know, I think it's probably going to be um, Limber. Uh, you know, right before uh, you know the Christmas holiday, that typically is what Nintendo seems to do. So I think that is probably going to be the uh, the launch window. Now, as far as other games, I truly believe that they are going to do a teaser trailer for the Zelda HD, and it'll probably be coming out the summer of 2013. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. That's my personal prediction. I think we're going to see um, some snippets of footage in HD. Of what the Zelda 3D or Zelda um, for the Wii U is going to look like, but I don't plan on seeing it any time in 2012. I don't think anyone does, but I think it is in development, and I think they're going to have it out by the summer of next year. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I also think that we're going to see a Super Smash Brothers uh, trailer. I think that game is going to be scheduled for launch in the spring of 2013. I know I'm very particular and specific about dates, but I've actually kind of thought it out. And I think that makes sense. Um, I think Nintendo, if they really want to keep this system selling strong, they need to be releasing games very periodically at specific dates and uh, not just releasing them all in one you know, specific time period and then having nothing but shovelware for the next you know, two years as um, you know, kind of the Wii has seen um, you know, in the past. I mean, there's plenty of third-party support, of course, for the Wii um, that is not shovelware. But, you know, for, as far as first-party Nintendo goes, you know, we, you got, like, Wii Baby, Wii Music, and Wii Fit, and all this stuff. While that stuff did sell fairly well, I mean, it's just shovelware. No one... I don't know. I don't care about it, to be honest. But anyways, um, those are the two things that I think we're going to see teaser trailers for. Super Smash Brothers and Zelda. Of course, there's also this Star Fox Metroid um, kind of crossover that people are talking about. Uh, there's rumors about it. I don't really know. I haven't really looked into it. So if you guys know anything about that, please let me know. Now another game that I think we're going to see a trailer for that uh, this is kind of probably my biggest prediction as far as Nintendo goes. I think that soon after the system's launch, this is going to be kind of one of those, uh, you know, really big incentives to go out and buy the console early in anticipation for this game. I think by the holiday, Christmas, the month of December at some point, we're going to have a new Mario. It's not going to be Mario Galaxy. It's not going to be Super Mario Sunshine. It's not going to be, you know, Super Mario 64. It's going to be a completely new Mario in a new universe. In a new universe. Because with every Nintendo console, you've seen a completely new designed world for Mario. You know, in the 8-bit days, Mario was introduced as far as, um, you know, Super Mario Brothers. Um, you know, the, the Super Nintendo, you had uh, Super Mario World. N64 days, you had new, uh, Super Mario 64 and in the 3D universe. The GameCube, you saw um, the, you know, Super Mario Sunshine was a completely new thing for Nintendo, just very, very different. And then, of course, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 for the Wii. I think with the Wii U, it's absolutely inevitable that they create a completely new universe and uh, you know, take Mario somewhere else, whether that be in the jungle and that, you know, I, I've kind of thought about maybe, you know, you take Mario to the jungle and then, he, you know, that's how he comes into contact with Yoshi 
And, you know, you could do all kinds of stuff. Maybe throw in Donkey Kong, incorporate him in the game at some point. You know, I think, you know, there's a tremendous number of things that they could do with the series um, and still, you know, um, appease the fan base behind the game and not disappoint fans of the series or the franchise, I should say. But I think they are going to reveal, whether it be even just a glimpse of Mario and, you know, then throw out a title and a release date, or whether that be a full-fledged on trailer and, uh, to you know, just completely just amaze people. I don't really know, but I think we're going to see some type of Mario reveal of some new Mario game that's going to be a completely different place. Um, they're going to incorporate, you know, new characters, and I, I think it's just going to be awesome. It's going to blow people out of the water. It's going to really entice gamers to go out and reserve the Wii U um, regardless of what the launch lineup is because this Mario, people want Mario. It is a system seller. History has shown it and I, I believe that the future is going to be the same. That, that, you know, the new Mario game is going to sell consoles. Alright, so those are kind of my predictions as far as the Wii U goes. I'm going to move on to the 3DS now because um, you know, there are a lot of games that were first announced when the 3DS was still in development before it was launched. And a lot of those games that, you know, Nintendo has promised us have not come out yet. And, uh, first party games. So, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, talk about some of those games that I believe, uh, they're gonna talk about here at E3. Alright, so there are three games that I think Nintendo is gonna showcase and really kind of focus on at E3 this year. Uh, whether there's more, less... I don't know, um, but as far as first party 3DS games go, I think we're going to have a release date and trailer at E3 for Animal Crossing and Paper Mario. Um, you know, I, they may have already announced the uh, release dates for Animal Crossing, but I think we're going to have a full on trailer, um, you know, a confirmed release date, and the same thing for Paper Mario, because that is a game a lot of people are anticipating. I myself have never played a game in the series, but I know a lot of people really want Paper Mario, and I think that if they schedule that um, towards the end of the year, in the fall, or in the holiday season, that'll sell a lot of systems. I think that'll bring more people to the console, and um, obviously it'll appease the people who have already purchased the console and really want the game. I also think we're going to have a confirmed release date for Luigi's Mansion 2, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a limited edition console bundle with this game. Now, I know that's a pretty bold prediction, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo did do that. Some kind of green 3DS with maybe a little L on the side. Uh, similar to the, you know, um, there was a, an original DS. Like, I'm talking about, you know, people, I don't really like this term, but the DS Fat. Um, if you guys remember that Mario one that had, like, the little M on it. And I think they bundled that with um, either Mario Kart or uh, New Super Mario Brothers. I think they're going to do the same thing with that, with a 3DS, and it's going to be a green 3DS. How cool would that be? I mean, that would be pretty sweet to bundle that with uh, Luigi's Mansion 2. So, um, I think those are going to be the 3DS, uh, you know, announcements. There may be more. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of third-party support. Ubisoft and, um, you know, anyone else. Maybe Konami will come out and say that Contra is coming out for the 3DS soon. You know, who knows? Uh, you know, there's endless possibilities. But... Let me know what you guys think as far as 3DS games go. Um, of course, this video is mainly focused on first-party support from Nintendo, but um, another big discussion that I could have gone on to is third-party support for the Wii U, because, of course, uh, a system isn't very successful unless there is third-party support. So uh, that's a really you know big discussion in and of itself. All right, guys, so that's kind of my wrap-up on Nintendo. I don't want this video to be too long. I don't want to be rambling on for 30 minutes, uh, because I know not many people are going to be attracted to a video like that. But uh, real quick, I did want to announce um, some kind of bold predictions for the PS, or I should say Sony and Microsoft. Both of them, I believe, are going to reveal their consoles this year. I know everyone and their brother has said from Microsoft and Sony that there is absolutely zero intention for them to do so. But I believe that both of them will announce consoles this year. They're going to come out and uh, really kind of just blow people away because... The Wii U is the only next-gen console that's really been announced this, thus far, so I think Sony and Microsoft are going to try and steal the show by saying, hey, listen, the Wii U, yeah, I know you guys are all excited about that, that's the only new console, but listen, we're coming to the show with, you know, <laughs> bigger guns, we're going to show you our console that's a step, you know, half a step ahead of the Wii U, 
Um, and I think people are going to be amazed. Um, or maybe they won't be. Maybe it'll just be a gimmick and it's just um, going to be a quick snippet in order to get people, you know, um, you know, salivating over these new consoles. I don't know what it's going to be. But I do think that both Sony and Microsoft have their new consoles in, you know, kind of very early stages of development. And I think they're going to, you know, somehow reveal some type of console reveal because um, with the Wii U, I, I just can't imagine that they wouldn't reveal some type of console. I don't think they'd wait until the next E3. And I think if they're going to reveal it, this is the place to do it, even if it is only, you know, a 15-second snippet of, hey, here is the console, we actually have it, end of story. Um, I don't really know. But let me know what you guys think about that, because that is a pretty bold prediction. And I could be completely wrong, you know, maybe they don't announce it for another six, seven months. You know, maybe that's the case. But I think they will, um, in addition to the any games they may be working on, I think um, Sony is going to be really trying to maybe push the move a little bit, because obviously that was just a tremendous fail. Maybe they have new games in development for that. I think Microsoft is going to be focusing on the Kinect and Fable the Journey. Um, I think that's going to hopefully gain some people as far as, um, you know, going out and purchasing the Kinect. I don't think Fable is that series, though, that everyone's dying to play. I mean, um, obviously there are a lot of people that want to play Fable, including myself, but I don't think, you know, Fable has the fan base that, like, Halo or Call of Duty has, or Wii Sports, that, you know, um, 40 to 60-year-old men and women are going to go out and be like, oh, yeah, Fable the Journey, that looks awesome. You know, I don't think you see, you're going to see that. So um, they need to do more with the Connect and the Move. They need to find games that are going to appease both gamers like myself and then, you know, the casual crowd, grandma and grandpa, because unfortunately that's the reality of it these days. You know, those types of people, those older folk are going out and buying these consoles now, and um, and that's what's making it harder for development teams because they have to make games that are going to appease to both um, these diehard gaming fans and then the people that, you know, want to pick up their console every you know, once in a while when some of their old friends come over and, you know, it's something they can pick up and play um, to pass the time. So I I've rambled on enough, you guys. Those are my predictions for E3 2012. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I encourage you, of course, to always leave video responses and comments, especially for this because this is a very um, kind of fun thing to talk about as E3 is quickly approaching us here in about two weeks. So... I want to thank you guys for watching this video, and uh, stay tuned for more.